I don't want to wait two years for season five. Stranger Things season four, volume two is epic, ambitious, long, and just incredibly well done in every aspect. Spoilers for the rest of it. I don't remember much of episode eight because so much happened in episode nine. I'm surprised the military plotline kind of got left where it left and they didn't pick it back up, but there were more urgent things at play there. When Hopper and Joyce and that whole team said they wanted to break back into the prison, I kind of rolled my eyes a little bit. I'm like, we just spent an entire season getting Hopper out of there and they're going right back. But that makes for compelling TV. And I love that they kill the Demogorgon with the, the sword that he did kind of channeling that Hellboy energy by using the Conan the Barbarian, the actual sword from Conan the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger, was really, really epic. The reunion at the end, it's just so cathartic and scary to think what's gonna happen in season five. Now Hawkins is merging with the Upside Down, and I think that's super compelling. There's a lot of other plot threads that I'm not kind of sure how they're gonna play in, such as the military after 11 angle. I think Will is gonna be a much bigger player in season five with him like getting the tingle on his neck, sensing Vecna. It began with him, so if it ends with him, I think that'd be really poetic. Part of me is struggling to talk about details from these two episodes, and here's why. The episodes are too long. I am a firm believer that something should be as long as it needs to be. And for years, I would always tell like, the longer the movie, the better, the longer the episode, the better. To a certain extent, I still feel this way. I just think these episodes could have been split up into more episodes and it would have worked fine. <laughs> the finale itself is two hours and like 22 minutes. It's longer than most movies. In discussing this with friends, you know, someone mentioned, you know, we don't necessarily need to look at streaming shows like we looked at network TV, because that's just kind of an old way of looking at that Nigri. But at the same time, I still think there's a limit here. And Stranger Things far surpassed it. I was so emotionally exhausted by the end of it, and so much had happened, that I even thought to myself, like, how am I gonna talk about this just from memory? I almost need to rewatch it. That's not to diminish the quality. And I see why they wouldn't wanna just like have a cliffhanger every time, but when you're gonna release it in a binge format anyway, why not just separate it so it's more easily digestible episodes to really hone in on what's happening? And I do wish that they had done the week to week model. Now, I appreciate to an extent that Netflix was experimenting and it worked because you have the first seven, really weird number still, dropped and people talked about it for five weeks and now they're gonna to continue to talking about these last two for quite some time. I talked about in my previous volume one review that it crescendos to this huge point and then just kind of stops. When you have week to week, you kind of expect that. When it's the binge model and you get seven, it just interrupts the flow. And then you have these last two and I can kind of see why they wanted to separate it. But if Netflix moved to the week to week and these episodes were edited into 16 episodes, like easily they could have done that. Or even if they had just found a way to kind of parse out the content a little bit, I think it would have been less of a commitment at one time to watch it. Because it's one thing to pause an episode, right? And come back to it later. It's a lot easier to finish one and say, okay, I'll watch the rest of them. It doesn't seem to be impacting their numbers. It doesn't seem to be a negative thing for them at all. It seems to be working quite wonderfully for them. But at the same time, I feel the way I feel. Back to the awesomeness. The reveal of Vecna creating uh, the Mind Flayer and all the other beasts being there and how he's just behind everything I thought was super well done. But I, I've got to talk about Eddie. Man. You know, Stranger Things has a history of introducing new characters and then them hor horrifically dying in some way, shape, or form. You got Barb from season one. You got Bob from season two, who also died a hero. And you've got uh, the Russian guy from season three. Uh, I think it was Alexi. Uh, kind of beloved, he gets killed off. And now you have Eddie. I'm sad, not just because it was a gut punch or super well done, but I'm sad because I think Eddie had more to explore as a character. Maybe that's the point. There was so much more to Eddie than anyone realized, that anyone gave him credit for. And I'm hoping there's a justice for Eddie moment in the final season where he gets his name cleared and it's revealed that he was a hero and he's the reason they succeeded. And his moment with Dustin just shattered my heart, man. When he said, this is my year. I didn't run away this time. I cried. That hurt. 
but man, he went out like a boss. Big Metallica, man. The master of puppets playing in the upside down, the most metal concert ever indeed. How incredible was that? That is going to go down as one of my favorite TV moments ever. I love it when music is creatively used in TV or film, and Stranger Things has always been good at that, but this is just next level. I, they accomplished it, and the actor actually played a good bit of it, and Metallica was excited about it. It was just I'm, unforgettable, unforgettable. And of course, Vecna survived all of that. I'm like, man, if they did all that, how the heck are they gonna kill him in the next season? He's the big bad, and it's okay to stretch him out to another season. So many closed up plot lines, but plot lines are, that are allowed to explore for more, such as the love triangle between Steve, Jonathan, and Nancy. <sighs> Tires me a little bit because we feel as torn as they do, right? I personally think that Jonathan and Nancy are gonna break up, and Steve and Nancy are gonna end up finding their way back to each other. Jonathan continuing to lie about the whole college thing and kind of their relationship not being the same. I think it's pointing in that direction, but someone mentioned, or I read somewhere about how Jonathan and Nancy got together, kind of left Steve in the dark anyway, even if he was a jerk at the time. We'll see what happens, but I just hope they do it in a way that's mature and respectful uh, to whatever way they decide and not kind of an icky, like cheating situation. But come on, Steve confessing that he wants six kids with her and how she changed him and gave him the wake up call, that is definitely telegraphing something coming. If they stick to their guns and Steve has to find love elsewhere, I'll respect it. But now that kind of got me hoping him and Nancy will get back together. So we'll see. Also, Nancy was channeling some like crazy Resident Evil, like heroin vibes when she was shooting Vegna. She's just such a boss and I appreciate the evolution of her character over so much time. Oh, before I go, Jason dying, holy cow. That shocked me uh, in a good way, but I also like don't like cheering for when people die. It just makes me feel weird. But I did not see that coming at all. And I was I actually think that there would be more to that story. However, we saw that when Eleven killed Vecna, she like disintegrated his body and he still got sucked into the ups upside down. Uh, even though he was like vaporized and his he still has a physical presence. And that's kind of what happened even though he was sliced in half and then disintegrated. It's possible he could come back as something more. That's my only little like conspiracy fan theory, but it's possible. And that whole sequence, man, with Max, I was on the edge of my seat. I was like, my wife and I both gasped several times. I thought it was really crazy what happened and there was huge consequences there. And uh, man, the kids, the, the, the actors, man, everybody in this show acted their hearts out. And I appreciate that to such an extent. And I hope that this show just sweeps the Emmys next year and just gets up every little word it can because they deserve it. The Duffer Brothers have created something so special. To be quite honest with you, I could rave about this season for a long, long, long time. There's so many other details I know I haven't talked about that I've missed. Have you finished Stranger Things season four yet? Do you think it's the best season? Personally, I do. I think it paid off tremendously. Despite some issues with the release format and all, it was pretty darn great. Here's hoping to season five in two years where we can always look for the good.